What's up guys, hope you're doing great. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my dream RC car and this is a really special kit by Tamiya. It's a ready to run actually, not a kit. This is the Tamiya Nitrage 5.2. It's a vintage kit. I've had it for some time in the original Tamiya box. As you can see, this is shipped directly from Tamiya. So here it is out of the box. I'm gonna to have to unpackage it carefully now. This is so exciting. I feel like a kid again. Wow, there she is in its original box, outside of the uh, shipping box. This thing is so nostalgic for me. It's uh, unbelievable because I still remember the, the image of the advertising and uh, I still remember looking at the box. I probably have this thing memorized almost. And uh, I remember looking online as well for all the videos. I believe it was 2008 at the time. So YouTube was still kind of new and uh, just watching videos on this thing and looking at websites and hobby shops and stuff because mind you, I know this kit is already an expensive kit from Tamiya and overseas where I lived, it was like three times the price or not really like double, two and a half times the price of, of what it was and it was also hard to attain. Uh, but this was the it car at the time and I just wanna say if you guys had this uh, when you were young, like growing up, then consider yourself really lucky because I think it would have been a beautiful experience to drive this at the time when RC cars, you know, didn't really have that much CC. Like this one had the uh, 5.2. It's just, you know, epic to drive it at the time because uh, RC cars then usually anything over 5 CC was a very heavy monster truck and all that stuff. So having this engine on a stadium truggy, which is a sport truggy from Tamiya, is just epic. So if you guys got to drive this in its heyday, uh, congratulations to you because that must have been a really, really cool experience. Because I, I do believe there was nothing uh, competing with this at the time. Just going to show you around the box real quick in case you want to read anything. Because that's what I do when I always open YouTube and stuff. I want to have a look at the box and kind of read the little details and all that stuff. So I'm going to do a quick circle. Try not to take too long. There we go, and okay, this is so exciting. I wanna, I can't wait to unbox it and see what uh, the condition of the car and anything, because I haven't seen it yet. I haven't opened anything, so let's get to it. So there it is in brand new condition out of the box. It's still in its nylon. The remote is still, you know, in zip ties and everything else is in the nylon. The rear wing is still taped to the cardboard. It's just so nice and i'm sorry that i'm expressing myself too much uh, but uh seriously a very exciting moment for me because this kit uh, like i said very nostalgic and uh you know it it means a lot to me i still i still can't believe that i actually have it okay so i removed the wing and i thought you need to normally with rc cars you need to kind of remove the pins to remove the nylon but with this one it seems like it just comes off on its own from underneath. I like that actually, it's easier. There she is with the wing on. Man, this thing, I can tell you from just the beginning of looking at it and feeling it, it does not disappoint. Can't even imagine how cool driving this thing will be. So nice, really. Look at that. Guys. This thing is in absolutely mint, brand new condition. It's crazy. Even the uh, filter element seems to be unharmed, which is very unusual for a kit of this age, even if it's in nylon and all that, because it's got oils and things on, on the foam. And that's very unusual because this kit is 2007. So this kit was released in December 2007, and we are actually right now December 2023. So that makes it 16 years old. That's crazy. It looks phenomenal. The the oil, the shocks, everything is just almost perfect. Going to do a little uh, close-up of the stuff and all the warning labels and everything. And this here. Muffler. Oh, 
Honestly, I think I'm even going to run it uh, not on a 2.4 gigahertz system. I'm probably going to use the OEM crystal set that it has here. Um, I might just keep the antenna short. But anyways, it's drilled. It's pre-drilled, so I'll just put an antenna on it. They did use a kind of like a plasticky exhaust, which I don't know if it'll hold up in the long run. But uh, again, this is how it is brand new, and I'm going to leave it untouched as, as much as I can, this kit. Even when I run it, I want to run it in its original form. There is a rare uh, two-speed option, which I really need to get my hands on. But I saw one on eBay. I think it was like $600 just for the two-speed on this thing. And yeah, it looks great. Let's see it from underneath. Nice. And this is just a little dusty here. Or not really dusty, it's from the cardboard packaging. So yeah. Now you can see a bit better. Here she is. And the suspension actually feels great. I just want to put this next to a kit that's a similar kit and it's a brand new kit from 2021 or something like that. So I want to put this next to it just to give you a perspective on, on how great this is for the age that it was released. So this should be interesting side by side. These are two stadium truggies, both RTR. Uh, from two completely different time periods. This is from 2021. This is the Lowe's AT, and it's a great, great platform. It's a great RTR platform. Um, look at its design. It's really nice. This one has some modifications done to it, like the uh, uh, tuned exhaust. It's got the pull start delete. It's got uh, upgraded clutch shoes, etc., etc. And honestly, doesn't disappoint. Has been absolutely great and reliable. This is the modern RC kit. Yeah. This is the 16-year-old Temia Nitrage. And still the suspension, you know, you can you can feel that the oil and the pistons and everything in the shocks are still great. This here. It's just fantastic. And again, just to put into perspective. This is, if I'm not mistaken, a 4 point something CC. This is a 5.2. And again, 16 year gap. More CC, less CC. All right, so decided to put them here. Now I say more CC here, but I do know that this engine revs absolutely beautifully. The stock Dynamite 2.8 revs to the moon, especially when you do the upgrades like the tuned exhaust and the pull start delete, it will give you more RPM right here. This one, I'm not really familiar too much with the um, RPM figures and the horsepower figures and everything. I'll have to read up about it. I'm pretty sure I, I read it a long time ago. I just seem to have forgotten because, again, I didn't really have access to this kit. But, yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see a comparison, actually, a side-by-side -side comparison between these two. And I, I will do that for a separate video. I just This video is all about this baby today. I want to start her up. Um, break in the engine, you know, normally and uh, go from there because it's it's absolutely fantastic. So here they are with the covers on side by side. So you can kind of get an idea of what they look like with the uh, covers on. You'll get a better picture when you see them both next to each other on, on the road or on the dirt. Uh, but yeah, I do love that with the Nitrage, even though it's 16 years older, the starting process is so much easier with the Roto Start. And this one, I need the starter box, obviously, because I deleted the pull start. But yeah, just I'm 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 really impressed with with the Nitrage, really, still till this day. I don't know why companies like Tamiya and Kyosho and all that stuff don't re-release the models that were sort of iconic. Um, it's bad for me to say that because it'll it'll drop down the price if they re-release them. Well, not really, because there will always be the original release and then there'll be the re-release and the originals will always hold their value and keep going up. But yeah, I think it's just better to re-release such kits because if they can, you know, with the older technology, maybe they don't even have that technology anymore because they just, they're just obsolete. So I don't know, but I really wish they would bring this stuff back because it's, it's, it's truly something. And, and, uh, I'm saying all this before we even try it. So let's get, on the road or on the dirt and give it a try. I want to 
protect this thing. I'm probably going to ceramic coat everything on it because I really want to keep this as new as possible. I don't want to do too many crazy things with this. Even the uh, wheels are stamped to me. Uh, you know, with Losi, you just get the uh, little dot here that's saying TL. But with this, you have a full Tamiya lettering on it and the wheels say Tamiya and all that stuff. So it's just really nice. Really, really beautiful. Really nice. So with that being said, let's get this thing truly ready to run for its first maiden drive. And for that, we need to continue the unboxing, which includes the manual and the remote and the roto start. So let's see what we have here. So this is basically all the stuff that comes with it. Let's get into it. Um, they have the manual, which is the user manual, the warranty card and all that stuff. They even provide you with some Tamiya number decal in case you want to change the number. It comes as number one, but you know, in case you have a specific number that you want to put, these are specifically the same size for the nitrage's number uh, square. Uh, it comes with a bunch of tools here, you know, typical nitro tools for the glow plug and some wrenches and Allen keys and extra pins. Uh, this one is another manual, but this one is really for uh, exploded diagrams, kind of similar to what you get in the kit model, just in case you need to rebuild some stuff, how to do your shock oils and all that stuff. Very important to have because on almost all RC cars, at some point, even the reliable ones, you have to do some maintenance and upkeep. And God forbid, if you damage it, you need this, you know, these are going to be lifesavers instead of having to go to Google and try to download some manuals, which I've had to do plenty of times because not all the kits I have have manuals. The other thing I love about this Roto Start is look how clean and pretty that looks with the Tamiya logo. Um, I've, I, I miss some things were actually done with more care back then uh, that I have noticed being in the RC world. Some stuff they've done to cut costs. Another thing, um, and I mean to cut costs recently, but back in the day, some things were done so neatly. And this is an example. So this is the roto start, right? Most HPI roto starts, like in the Savage and stuff, there's no real nice way to tuck the, uh, the um, hex rod in that turns on the motor. This one has a really nice little clip here that you can actually, so there we go. I got it to move. And this way you take it out and you can use it. And then when you're done, you put it back. Let me show you guys. And then you close this right there. And there you go. And you tuck it away and you put it back Oops, in your nitro box. Just really pretty. And it's branded on both sides, which is really cool. Uh, again, I'm going to probably use the original receiver and transmitter. So uh, I'm not going to change anything that doesn't need to be changed. I'm going to use this. And yeah, that's. I think we're ready to go. We just need some nitro fuel. Need to read the manual, see what percentage this takes. Because um, I don't like to run a higher percentage. And without further ado, enough talk. Let's go run the kit. All right, so this is the maiden start. Suddenly got very windy and pretty cold. I don't really have a preheater. I need to kind of invest in one of those, but I just let it warm up on its own. So let's see. update uh, I put the correct filter with the Tamiya filter oil I just love the way the red looks on these things way more than uh, the blue like for the Lozi and stuff so 
yeah, I want to keep it as factory as possible. I love that vapor coming out of the fuel tank. Fuel vapor. It's so cool. <laughs> Sixteen years old, and it drives magnificent. What a beautiful machine, really. I met my dream RC car. This is my RC hero when I was a kid, and I'm not disappointed at all. Sixteen years later, and I am not disappointed. I don't know why companies like Tamiya discontinue such kits like this or they don't even make uh, remakes for them uh, I think they really should I mean they brought back things like the grasshopper and the frog and those things are amazing but honestly not to be compared to that I love driving the frog and the grasshopper but the electric is, is just cool as a nostalgic uh, figure but this is not just nostalgia this is nostalgia as well as uh, performance and driving and 5.2 cc it's just it's fantastic really it, it can keep up with a lot of the race struggies of today in terms of power obviously the suspension and the chassis is not fine-tuned for pure racing this is more of like a basher but can handle the track and with regards to the shocks just a few adjustments would make them uh, you know race ready they're they're great for what i'm doing now and even a, a little bit of off-roading is, is fantastic but if you want to hit those track jumps and whatnot you have to really uh, thicken the oil inside maybe change some springs and uh, you know mess with the height of the shock and the preload but all in all this car is just fantastic um, I'm not disappointed at all if anything I'm beyond impressed um, as how this thing drives really it's just great it's freezing cold right now as you can see by the vapor from my mouth but uh, it's still idling great and it's not a special glow plug in here or anything it's the standard number eight uh, os8 glow plug uh, the glow plug on the tamiya was the n4 i believe that came with it 
but it went bad immediately. I assume that's because it's 16 years old. Um, the only things I really had to change on this were the filter foam, because the filter foam was preserved, but it uh, almost disintegrated very easy, so I had to replace that. Uh, used the original Tamiya oil on the filter, and the N4 glow plug by Tam uh, on the Tamiya engine, I had to replace with the OS number eight, and it just is fantastic. And I'm not running a special kind of nitro either. I'm running 25%. I'm not going with the race fuel uh, 30%. I'm doing the VP 25%. And it's just holding its own. And it is really cold. Like I shouldn't be able to put my hand on the engine for this long after some pulls like this. But yeah, let's, uh, let's do one final pull and then uh, get out of here because it's getting really cold. That's what made it tip over. And then That was great. 
I already know some of you might be thinking, Nabi, you have a real race car and you've driven all these cool cars from Ferraris to Lambos, etc. Why the hell do you spend so much energy, time and effort and money on RC cars? Honestly, if you didn't get it by now, you're probably not going to get it. But the level of passion some of us have for, you know, this sport and all its scales, um, I can't even explain it. So it's just when you love something and when you're really passionate about something, uh, it doesn't matter what size, it's just incredibly easy access to fun and pure joy. Um, I know driving a real race car is probably the highest level of euphoria and physical dedication and all that stuff. But uh, these things also, I've said it before and I'll keep saying this almost every time, everything translates through the scales from one to another. So I learn a lot from this stuff uh, that can also be applied to the real thing. So, And I learn a lot from the real thing that can also be applied here. Uh, it's just something when you're passionate about something, again, it's hard to explain. A lot of you people who are watching this video are probably already like me, so it's not going to be um, difficult for you to understand. But I know some of you are going to watch this and be like, what the heck is wrong with this guy? What is he doing when he has access to the real stuff? 